What's up everybody, my name is Andy and welcome back to Kit Guru. So today we're looking at a brand new affordable lightweight mouse aimed at FPS and MOBA players with an insane 8000 hertz polling rate which costs just $49.99. So we're checking out Corsair's brand new Sabre RGB Pro. So if you enjoy our honest, unbiased reviews here at Kit Guru, please support us by smashing that like and subscribe button for free down below, go do it. Everyone seems to be after a decent lightweight gaming mouse these days, and I have to be honest, I was never really one of those people. I always used a big, clunky, heavy MMO mouse like the Razer Naga just for everything. Lots of you will laugh, but I even used a DPI around four and a half thousand for FPS games, but about a year or more ago, I actually switched to using a lightweight mouse at much lower DPI, maybe a thousand, thirteen hundred for FPS games, and I didn't realize what I was missing. Then last year, Year, I reviewed Corsair's Dark Core RGB Pro and I was put into a difficult situation because it cost around £90, it was heavy at 133 grams, but it had 2000 hertz polling rate and placebo or not, I felt like it made a difference. So the Dark Core is an excellent mouse, check my review of it if you haven't seen it already, but I wanted something a bit more affordable and also more lightweight. So now Corsair seems to have answered my prayers and released almost everything I've wanted in an FPS mouse at a seriously appealing price point. At just £50, I think it actually appeals to almost everyone as well. And I do want to mention quickly that there's also a non-RGB version of the Sabre Pro that's £5 cheaper and 5 grams lighter coming in at £44.99. And I think this is excellent as consumers now actually have a choice to save money if they're not fussed about RGB or or if they want an even lighter mouse. So great work Corsair. The Sabre RGB Pro we're looking at today is 129 by 70 by 43 millimeters and weighs 74 grams and the other version weighs 69 grams. It's right-handed only and has a very generous 2.1 meter long non-removable paracord cable ending in a type A USB 2.0. I know some people aren't fan of these cables, but personally I have no issues with them. It's very light and flexible, and I found it didn't cause any drag whatsoever actually in use. Of course, it could run the risk of fraying if it's constantly rubbing on the edge of your desk, but I don't have that issue. I know some of you will be disappointed at the lack of a detachable cable, but at this price point I'd be surprised to see that option anyway really. Corsair already have a Sabre mouse available, but their new Sabre RGB Pro is a total overhaul in terms of design and aesthetics. The new design is much less aggressive and far more understated. It's a matte black design with an ever so slightly rough sort of feel to it that aids grip. The primary buttons are separate from the main shell and also have comfort grooves on them. And the same material can be found on both left and right sides as grip and on the side buttons as well. I'm a fan of this as it's not a fingerprint magnet. Despite not being that grippy, the mouse is so light I had no issues with grip anyway. What I'm not massively keen on, aesthetically at least, is the gloss bar that runs entirely around the mouse. It looks okay, but the second you look at it, it starts attracting those fingerprints. The same gloss plastic is found on the DPI button and small panel by the scroll wheel as well. At first, I was actually mistaken thinking there was a DPI up and down button, but on the top, it's simply a gloss accent and the actual button is below that. What I do like is the inclusion of the DPI indicators on the left hand side towards the front inside that gloss panel. There's three small LEDs that indicate which DPI stage you have selected and this is good for knowing what settings you're using on the fly without consulting the IQ software. These indicators can display five DPI stages by lighting one LED on the right for 400 DPI, two on the right for 800 DPI, one in the middle for 1200, two on the left for 1600, and one on the left for 3200. Personally, I love visual representations, especially if I'd be changing them during gameplay. The scroll wheel has a super grippy rubber grip and a large RGB zone that is pretty bright as well. The only other RGB zone on the mouse is Corsair's ship sails logo on the back towards the base of the mouse. Yeah. 
The front of the mouse is angled forward and has those Corsair classic grills we see molded underneath that gloss strip that continues across the front. Underneath we have a nice clean aesthetic with 400% PTFE glide pads and a small one in the center around the sensor and then the standard certifications and information written around it. This time we have a much more ergonomic shape compared to the original Sabre. This new design is aimed at palm and claw grip use. It's quite a long and thin mouse design with a relatively high mid hump that slopes down towards the right for comfort. The left side also tapers in nicely for thumb support. As a claw grip user myself with medium sized hands, this design is ridiculously comfortable for me. The mouse fits my hands perfectly and rests naturally on it too. Fingertip grip works okay but as the mouse is fairly long I do find that it rubs my palm slightly whereas palm grip is absolutely perfect due to the length of this mouse. Comparing the design to the ExtraFi M4 mouse which is another ergonomic shape the Sabre Pro is longer and doesn't taper in on the left side as drastically as the M4 does. The right side is totally different as well. The M4 is rounded for pinky comfort but the Sabre actually tapers in towards the front end on the right hand side which I actually kind of prefer because it's more comfortable and natural feeling to me at least. The Sabre Pro also has comfort grooves on the primary buttons which also aids the overall comfort. Comparing the Sabre Pro to the new Asus ROG Keras, it's almost the same design but the Keras is much smaller overall. It has the same taper in on the left and right sides but the hump on the top continues across the left primary button whereas the Sabre Pro dips down into those comfort grooves. Build quality wise the Sabre Pro is excellent especially for the price point I'm really happy to see. There's no rattle at all and I can't actuate any of the buttons by pressing the top or squeezing the sides either and there's no hard or rough edges either. The Sabre RGB Pro has Omron switches but it also has a feature Corsair calls quick strike buttons which Corsair claim have pre-tensioning on the left and right buttons with downward spring loaded force to close the distance between them and the Omron switches for zero gap. This is meant to give less travel, crispier clicks and immediate return. Now normally I'd read something like this and say ah it's marketing talk but I can't stress enough quick strike works. These may possibly be the most responsive and satisfying primary buttons I've ever felt in any mouse regardless of budget. The click is so satisfying I'm actually really impressed here especially at this price point like I said earlier. They feel so snappy and accurate it's quite refreshing there's absolutely zero pre-travel and as soon as any pressure is put onto the button it actuates and as soon as you release it it returns to the neutral position. There's a tiny amount of post travel but that's me being finicky you don't actually notice it at all in use. Comparing it to the ExtraFi M4 and the Asus Keras and many other mice as well actually the Sabre Pro wins hands down. It also has a much more satisfying click rather than a dull sort of thud like the other mice I've tried tend to have and this applies to both the left and right buttons. On the other hand the Sabre Pro's wheel click is quite clunky with a dull sound. There's no pre or post travel but it's not as fast feeling as the primary buttons. Scrolling is fine too, it's not too loose or too tight and it does have mild incremental resistance. It does sound a little bit plasticky when scrolling though. Side buttons are fine, there is a slight pre and post travel but nothing horrendous and honestly it's hardly noticeable, much less compared to the ExtraFi M4 which has really bad pre and post travel on the side buttons. They're both very clicky and responsive as well. Here's a sound test comparing the M4, the Keras and the Sabre RGB Pro.
Let's start looking at our sensor by doing a lift off distance test as you cannot adjust the height in the software. It's a pretty quick test to be honest because at one disc height, the sensor does not read anything whatsoever. So we have a super low lift off distance. If you're wanting to add your own custom glide pads, then this is probably not for you. But personally, I prefer a very low lift off distance myself. And this is aimed at FPS and mobile players. And I think most prefer a low lift off distance anyway when using low DPI settings and big swooping arm movements. Corsair told us it was a PMW3392 sensor, but it's clearly labeled as the PAW3392 on the sensor itself. And this does make sense as this is also the same sensor found in the Corsair Dark Core RGB Pro with DPI between 100 and 18,000. And it also features Corsair's Axon hyper processing technology previously seen in Corsair's Dark Core RGB Pro that I reviewed before and a max polling rate of 2000, whereas the Sabre RGB Pro can reach an insane 8000 Hertz, boasting eight times faster transmission in comparison to standard gaming mice that normally have 1000 Hertz polling rate. At 1000 Hertz polling rate, there is a one millisecond delay and on higher refresh monitors, this lower polling rate can actually become noticeable in terms of perceived smoothness it looks a little bit jittery. Whereas at 8,000 Hertz polling rate, there is a 125 microsecond delay, which is a huge difference. And on high refresh rate monitors, especially 240 or 360 Hertz monitors, this clearly will show a smoother experience. I myself have a G-Sync 165 Hertz monitor, and I believe I can see a difference. Out of the box, the mouse is set to 1000 Hertz and 8000 Hertz is only selectable via IQ software, which we'll look at later. The reason for this is due to the increased data rate being transferred to the PC. Since Corsair recommend an i7 or Ryzen 7 for 8000 Hertz polling rate and a ninth generation i5 or second gen Ryzen 5 for 4000 Hertz, I decided to test and compare the CPU usage when set to 1000 1000 and 8000 Hertz polling rate. I myself have a Ryzen 5 5600X running at 4.2 gigahertz. For the first test, I moved my mouse quickly in circles on the desktop. At 1000 Hertz, Task Manager displays around 9% CPU usage, whereas at 8000 Hertz, Task Manager displays around 16% usage. That's an increase of approximately 78%. For my second test, I loaded a private Call of Duty game, ran in a straight line whilst whipping the mouse left and right. At 1000 Hz, Task Manager displays an average of 53% CPU usage, whereas 8000 Hz shows an average CPU usage of 63%, and that's approximately 19% more CPU utilization when compared to having 1000 Hz polling rate enabled. That's quite a big difference, almost double the CPU CPU usage on the desktop and almost 20% more within Call of Duty. If you're using an older system, then you have peace of mind that 1000 Hertz works with everything out of the box. And we can see why Corsair recommends a modern CPU for 8000 Hertz though. If you're using an older quad core, for example, like a 4790K, the extra CPU utilization could be detrimental to gaming performance. So to put the polling rate and quick strike buttons to the test, I tested my reaction time using the Sabre RGB Pro on the Human Benchmark website. The average reaction time is 215 milliseconds. With the Sabre RGB Pro, I managed to score 187 milliseconds with 8000 Hertz enabled, whereas I scored 193 milliseconds with the mouse set to 1000 Hertz. Not much of an improvement, I must say, and you have to keep in mind there is a lot of human variability here. I may have been slower off the mark when using the 1000 Hertz mode. Ultimately, it's actually quite hard to test the polling rate claims other than simply describing it to you and what it felt like in use. It very well could be excellent marketing placebo, or it could be the next feature that every FPS or MOBA targeted mouse should have. I even said in my Dark Core review that I could tell the difference, but it could be a placebo. This time around, I swear I noticed a faster response rate and also pairing the sensor with those quick strike buttons of the Sabre RGB Pro, this mouse is an absolute FPS and MOBA monster, placebo or not. 
I had no issues with the sensor at all. There's no jittering or any negatives that I've found really. In Call of Duty, it really made me feel like I had an edge knowing that my every move, whether good or bad, was going to be input as soon as I thought it. Also, being relatively lightweight at 74 grams meant I could move it around with ease too. Finally, let's take a look at Corsair's brand new version of their IQ software. As always, make sure you have updated your software and firmware to the latest version. Go to the settings cog, updates, and check there. Clicking on the Sabre brings up tabs on the left with key assignments that let you remap the five buttons. Left click is not reassignable. Lighting effects let you add or adjust effects by clicking on the plus button or the effect name. Here you can change presets, zones, speed, and more. DPI tab lets you adjust the default and hardware DPI modes via sliders. Surface calibration lets you calibrate to whatever mouse surface you're using, and device settings also lets you check for updates, change RGB brightness, and more, but it is here where you can select between 125 and 8,000 hertz polling rate. Now, I personally like the new version of IQ. It's very clean, easy to understand, and intuitive. It's nice to see an update. Software works very well, and it's quick to apply changes too. There's no lift-off distance settings to change but as mentioned before this is aimed at fps players after all so you know I'm fine with that. Overall, I absolutely love the Saber RGB Pro by Corsair. The price point is excellent, coming in at 50 quid essentially for the RGB version or 45 for the non-RGB version that is also lighter. The sensor is super responsive, especially at that 8,000 Hertz polling rate and paired with the quick strike buttons makes this a seriously good gaming mouse in general. Not only that, but the incredibly comfortable ergonomic shape for claw and palm grip just gives me even more reason to love the Saber RGB Pro. I highly recommend this mouse to absolutely anyone regardless of budget and honestly it feels more like a sort of £70 mouse than a £50 one in my opinion. The primary buttons are even nicer to use than my Razer Viper Ultimate which cost £150, so three times more. <laughs> so what do you guys think of this? Are you uh, planning to get one yourself? Let us know down in the comments. If you've liked this video hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, check out our merchandise down below and check out our website daily for tech news. I'm Andy, this is Kit I'll see you in the next one.